What is going on everybody? I'm at the Detroit airport on my way to Collecticon. Looking forward to it guys. This is going to be freaking awesome. Got the wife with me. We're going to be there this morning. This morning being Friday. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> change your life. Isn't it amazing? What? You need I more mean, ice cream. It tastes good, but... It's life-changing. The fries taste amazing without the ice cream. No. And the ice cream tastes amazing without the fries. And You're even, just making two really fatty foods together. Even more amazing. Yep. You need to try... You can try it with a checker fry and a banana shake. No, these fries are bomb. This is us when we first got into the convention on Friday. So we went to the convention on Friday just to pick up our badges. Had to do a quick look around and see what's going on. What are the different booths? All these people are kind of insane to me. That people set up all their stuff on Fridays. All of their valuable items just chilling out there waiting and hoping the security does great but it's crazy uh this was pretty interesting there was probably more video games i've seen here than any other collecticon hands down like dedicated booths which was pretty cool fast forward to saturday morning today is the day we're setting up the con to have the booth set up there's sarah pokenomics catch them all collectibles ponga larry e-unit myself drinking coffee brad g cards there we got i think lord pokey smoke there in the back nostalgia nomics and his wife in the back ray but here's the booth getting a first initial glimpse really quick right here looks beautiful i mean ready hell no dude i ain't ready <laughs> i was in fact pretty close to being ready here's the rest of my booth some more vintage stuff not a whole lot of modern to be shown um, pretty much all vintage for me this entire show. All vintage, like barely any modern, if any. I was fortunate enough to be across the alleyway from Mason Cardinal Gaming. Look at this beautiful man right here. This next section, I'm kind of just going to show you a bunch of different things. There's the wife right there. Shout out to her again for making the trip. Showing off my booth. And I'm going to walk around my entire section here. And uh, just show you guys some of the different cards and stuff that was available at, at Collecticon. Uh, also going to go around the section next to us and show off some of their stuff. A lot, a lot of really cool items. Uh, that was Brad G. Card's booth. This here is Lord Pokey Smoke's booth. Um, way more modern than anybody, like, than I had. Every single person in my section had modern, and I had, like, almost none. So... Everyone had a really healthy amount, I feel like, of a, a good mix between modern and vintage, as you can see here. Very good stuff. And then, of course, you got some sealed products, Charizards galore, Gengar, just all, like, the popular creatures, monsters, Pokemon, whatever you want to call them. Those are, like, the go-tos. And then you got this random section, which God knows what some of that is, but really cool seeing some more raw cards. Very cool. Also, really good labels here. Really good. Printed out large. Can read the numbers. Um, you can't really read the grades on some of those cards unless you zoom in really good. But at least you can see the price. Give you an idea. But the modern is very nice. It's 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 what people know right now. Like, it, the vintage is like, it's itself is niche. Like, the modern is just in the know. And it's what everybody's familiar with because <laughs> it's just it's just there. It's it's it, it's what's at the stores. It's what people are opening at home. Really cool Alakazam there. Absolutely love that card. I really like these gold Giratina and RCS cards too. Very cool. There's some vending cards. Crazy, crazy. 1998, I believe those are. Um, Fifty dollars for a PSA 10 Kangaskhan, which is pretty cool. Some mix of Yu-Gi-Oh! Shout out to the people with Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff. This is Larry's cards here. Um, or his, his uh, sealed cards. Very cool. 
Um, catch them all collectibles here, sitting down, uh, updating his OnlyFans. And he had some pretty cool cards. Some pretty sweet stuff. There's his Squirtle. Awesome, awesome stuff. High-end, high-end stuff. And also some modern, which is a good mix to have. Because um, you never know who's going to walk by your booth. And to have kind of everything is kind of the play. But you don't want too much. Like, I have never bet, like, I don't want too much inside of my set, inside of my um, case because it just gets too cluttered. Um, and I kind of like keeping some version of, like, uh, not categories, but basically categories. I like having, like, this little modern section or this type of Pokemon or these Japanese cards. I don't like mixing them because it gets really cluttered really easily. Uh, I'm going to walk over here. This is uh, Jake Pokenomics booth. He had, I think, two or three tables. Um, so shout out to you, Jake. This is a pretty cool. He's got tons of different stuff going on here. Disney, uh, Lord of the Rings, like old Harry Potter, Pokemon, singles, graded. Like you walked up to his booth. It was like a freaking store. Uh, sealed products. Like it literally felt like it was uh, an LGS over here on this side with all this stuff going on. Similar to Ray's section, our, uh, our cabin leader over in the other section, he had a bunch of stuff like that. This is Java Akuma. Shout out to Java Akuma. Very cool. He was uh, a local to here, so he's able to bring his own cases, why they look so really clean. Um, but yeah, this is a cool setup. Absolutely love the nice cases. Like, that's really cool. Uh, love the looking at the pristine tens. Those things pop like a son of a gun. Here's some really cool poncho cards. A little out of my price range, but they're awesome to look at for sure. Bunch of Charizards, can't go wrong there. That's another thing. Like, I didn't have, like, a lot of cheap slabs. And Java Kuma had a nice little, like, shoebox filled with cheaper cards, which was pretty nice. And uh, it's definitely something to consider. I did have that, but it was vintage cards. Like, I, I just don't have, like, modern graded cards, really. Um, but as you can see here, it's just a mix of a bunch of modern, like alt arts here. You got a, a red and green gift set, Zapdos, like a great mix of cards on a lot of these things. I believe this is Gengar Den's booth here. Um, a lot of cool stuff. Very cool. Checking it all out. Man, Gengar is so popular. It is insane how many people like this freaking guy it is crazy there's a diglet i saw it really cool looking stamps these things are i can't believe they didn't sell there's there's a to compare it to my hand my hand is effing massive 50 dollars on the glizzy sadly not a 10 or else i might have snapped it whole gengar freaking binder shout out to that crazy it, well this is our section. We're going to walk over here. This is uh, Cardinal Gaming there in the background. You can see it. But, man, it's uh, time to get it on. Let's do a pack battle. The title will be opening. You're too freaking tall, dude. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right, here we go. We're opening 151 English. Let's go. I'm going to have a winner. Is that a bad sign? Go card? It does not matter. It's <laughs> What? Or you mean the Yeah. Reverse? Oh. Uh, all right. Done? Oh. Got an easy one. You got a shining energy in the back? <laughs> Weeping Bell, Ghastly, Paris, Rapidash, Nidorina, Raticate, Haunter, Shelter, Chansey. Ooh. Oh, wait. You got a okay. swirl. Yeah. I've seen. That's pretty nice. I've seen. Not bad. That's pretty good. Cool. I really do hope you enjoyed some of the vlog. I know it's kind of short. Didn't get a whole lot of footage, even with my wife coming. That was the first time my wife has come to a Collecticon. The event itself was awesome. If you haven't already, I did give a little bit of a detail to it on the Slab Podcast, my podcast I'm in. I'll link down below in the description. But yeah, I had a great effing time. Let's give you just a little bit of a play-by-play. -play. So, because you did not get that at all in the previous vlog sequences so friday arrival on friday had the day off me and the wife got to the airport it was early 6 a.m or so we got to charlotte like the flight was like an hour long that was effing awesome that was 
superb. Got to the got to Charlotte about I don't even know 10:30 a.m. in the morning. It was nice. Had the whole day Friday to kind of chill. Was ideal. So we got there, chilled in the hotel for a few. The next plan was lunch. Wanted to get some lunch. Already messaging inside of the discords where we're going. We landed and I picked a B Dubs. Big fan of B Dubs, and it was right next to the convention. The plan was to go from the the lunch into the convention with Ray, who was our section leader, uh, to go get our badges. That was the plan. So, get to Buffalo Wild Wings, and it's connected to the NASCAR Hall of Fame, which is pretty cool. Never been there, didn't plan on going there, but my neighbor was a huge fan, so I was able to get him a hat. He was excited. Uh, so, Buffalo Wild Wings was awesome. Basically, our whole section and others ended up showing up. We ended up having, like, I don't even know, 15 almost 15 people there a bunch of people i had never met which was really cool again the wife was there getting to meet a bunch of these people she had met a few of them in at the national which was awesome uh but awesome it was awesome to be able to get there we were there for a couple hours just hanging out maybe a couple hours drinking some beers really good uh so about three o'clock rolls around the next play again we're going to the convention the group of us it was like it was like 12 of us walked down walked in like we owned the place not a single person uh looked for a badge or anything we just walked right in no issues kind of sus not gonna lie uh but basically we went to go grab our badges right away that was the play walked right in to grab our badges and we did so uh at the same time right when we walked in around three o'clock mason was just showing up with his truck to unload it so all of us had like pitched in a hand helped him move the stuff and we basically sat around hanging out there, grabbed, I was cleaning off my, uh, my section, my, uh, whatever they, the displays, wiping them down with Windex, uh, shout out to E-Unit, he had brought Windex, I was phenomenal, I did not, I brought everything else besides that, but the Windex was clutch, so clean that up, and it was probably about 6 o'clock, so I didn't bring anything with me, which was nice, we were all sitting down around, thinking about what to do for dinner, I was doing a lot of searching. Couldn't figure out. This again was Friday evening, five, six o'clock. Um, ended up finding this place called the Public House Local, and I, it was kind of on the way back to the hotel. It was perfect. Um, not too far out of the way. So we all ended up going there. I think we originally sat down, filled up a whole entire table. It was like 12 of us. Um, and it was great. It was great. A big atmosphere, not too loud. It was really nice. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to find a decent place that could fit us Friday with short notice because literally we just walked up there, no pre-call, literally all of us, 12 of us, and they had a table for us right off the rip, which was perfect. Um, food was great. Food was great. The, the first, the issue I was having when I was looking for a place to go is finding like a, a bar that had a decent sale price on their beer there was a lot of really expensive places most of them were smaller but this place was big could accommodate us and had a decent priced beer uh, which was great and had a bunch of different options which was sweet so the public house was awesome we were there from like 6 p.m till like 1 30 in the morning didn't stay until the entire shutdown but basically through the whole night tons of different waves of people kept coming and going uh, which was really awesome. We kind of had like taken over this entire section. There was probably 25-ish people at one point, which was really cool. Uh, got to meet a whole bunch of people for the first time and see a whole bunch of familiar faces again. Um, that was really cool. My wife getting to meet all these people and getting to take this all in for the first time. She had met Mertz, Lord Pokey Smoke, Ponga before, but Everybody else was there. She got to meet PK and maybe Dan briefly, old school Pokemon briefly. Um, Alex, Nostalgianomics, his wife was there for a brief moment. Um, tons of people, tons of people. Like I, there's too many friggin' names for me in a list. Um, but it was it was an awesome event. Uh, got to meet Pika Drew, the, the co-host on the Slab podcast I had. Uh, getting to meet him and Java Akuma, and I'm sorry if I'm forgetting a name, but. Uh, there were so many people there on Friday. That was that was that was like the peak for me for the weekend. It was that event, um, all the different people getting in there because that was that was like the one time where everyone was getting together pr pretty much. Um, there wasn't a whole lot else going on inside of our groups um, that were able to set up a section. So we had uh, in our Collecticon planning group, we had like five total sections. 
taken up at Collecticon. I believe it was five, which is a lot. Like, we, we should almost get a dedicated Pokemon graphic saying, go here for Pokemon cards on the Collecticon thing, like they did for the sport, sports cards. Well, who cares about sports cards? Um, so that was good. Friday closed the bar, 1.30, lots of drinking. Woke up uh, Saturday, not hungover. Pristine, that was perfect. Um, woke up Saturday, good time to go to the con, not too bad. And I felt felt great. Uh, stopped, got a latte on the way in, um, and it was good. So we got to the booth, set it up, everything was great. Um, big shout out to my wife. We had a carpet remnant we bought for $5 from Aldi's. Shipped it down in our luggage, and that was on the ground at our booth for us to stand on the entire time. That saved the F out of my legs and ankles like anything I've ever seen. Huge, huge shout out for that. Um, but Saturday, the sales went great. A lot of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff was sold. I uh, did, did a lot different than what I did at uh, Orlando. I didn't bring niche stuff, really. Um, you can call it Yu-Gi-Oh niche, but I brought like liquid Yu-Gi-Oh things. And I did a great job selling a bunch of that stuff. I had a binder set uh, of singles for the first time. Those did decent. Um, nothing modern. I didn't have a whole lot of modern, but the, the decent modern stuff did sell inside of that binder. Um, had some sealed boxes, sold Lorcana box, traded a magic, uh, magic ruler Yu-Gi-Oh box, sold an evolving or, uh, evolutions box. Um, sales were pretty good. Great. Uh, my wife had a great time. She made some sales allowing me to walk away from the booth. Like me able that was one of the huge things. Obviously, it's double the expense. So, let's say uh, my flight down there myself, call it all in $400 for me, round trip to Detroit to Charlotte. Double that. So, I'm all in like $1,200 for flight and hotel just for me and her to make the trip, let alone doubling the bar tab, doubling the food tab. Like, it's expensive to have a guest come on a business trip. Um, there is huge benefits, huge benefits, like me being able to get up, walk around whenever I wanted. I could go be buying the whole entire Sunday. I could have just went and been, been buying, waiting for her to call if she had a question about maybe something higher end. But yeah, that was a huge benefit. I think I would, next time when she comes, I think I would spend a lot more time on the Sunday walking around and buying things. Um, and kind of double dipping. I love send, selling. Saturdays are generally busier, but you do have some good Sundays. Um, so me being able to double dip that into one con would be pretty massive. So maybe look forward to doing that in Orlando, which will probably be my next Collecticon trip. Um, but the sales were moving good. Had everything priced out as I always do, as you probably saw in the vlog. I can't remember, but thoroughly, definitely price everything out it's it's mandatory there's a bunch of people that don't price things out it's tough enough with singles behind glass and even even graded cards like you want to look at some of these things that maybe you could buy the cgc9 or the psa9 you want to see the condition like it's a nuisance like you feel bad almost asking hey can i check out this nine? Oh, trash I'll give it back to you like i want to look at conditions of cards so it's at least have a price on there at a, at a minimum um so Saturday was going good, shut down at 6 p.m., uh, went back, dropped off all the cards and everything at the hotel. The next play was dinner. Ended up going to a nice Italian restaurant. Uh, not too nice. It was, like, decently priced. Uh, my, like, they had the tablecloths, and the actual waiter was coming around putting the freaking napkin in people's laps, um, which was strange. I made sure to have my own in my own lap. That was kind of weird, but it was a good dinner. There was, like, 10 or 12 of us there uh, for the Italian dinner and what did i have i had a, i think i got a cheeseburger i think i got a cheeseburger at the italian restaurant well done of course chef's kiss so good um but yeah it, it did not upset my stomach like uh the short rib or whatever that pikachu got he went to the bathroom two seconds after he ate it um so i was feeling good after eating my cheeseburger so uh the food was great can't complain the night at like the nightlife of that going to the trade night after that um we were at that restaurant for like three hours by the way we were there for like two and a half minimum hours like it was insane how slow it was service was great like the dude the the waiter was phenomenal just it like it felt like i was in europe like it was literally the slowest dinner i've eaten in a long effing time 
at least I was surrounded by great people being able to talk and discuss things. Without that, it would have been the most brutal thing in my entire life. But the dinner was great. Trade night. Get to trade night. The first thing, I, the first thing when I walk in, um, I go into the sweaty swamp room. And this is where they have all the people set up on the tables. This is where they dedicated the trade night to. Basically, you walk in there and literally, I had mentioned it on the podcast, it smelled like cheeseburgers. It was like humidity was an absolute high. You walk in there, it's like 93 degrees, and you literally feel like you're swimming through the air. And it smelled like cheeseburgers, like I said. It was not a good situation. Um, so I walked through there, and the music was blaring beyond belief. Worse than any collect con I've ever experienced. Music was trash. Not good. Cannot say I would recommend ever going to that trade night by the... It, it was not good. Uh, I heard the alcohol was expensive. Didn't even ask. Was not interested. Um, but yeah, so trade night inside of that room was not good, but outside of that room, around the bar area, a lot more quaint. It was nice, quiet. Um, that's where the first time I got to meet Rattle, I had, uh, shout out to Rattle, had interviewed him on my channel, so it was cool to finally meet him in person. Um, so I talked to him for a couple minutes, and then literally two minutes after I talked to him, uh, some dude, uh, the pokey flute, skin flute dude, came up to him and started yelling at him, like right, like I was standing right between them. It was, I thought he was joking at first. I, I literally, I didn't know who this was. He's like, and then he starts cussing at him. And it was like, what the F is going on? I was literally standing there confused out of my effing mind. I'm like, who is this dude? I guess I wouldn't expect anything else than uh, for Rattle to get cussed out by somebody in a public event. But it was pretty interesting. So that was like the first experience going around the bar. All the people were there opening packs. Uh, shout out to BB, Brandon. He had brought some of the good, uh, like, guaranteed hit packs. I forget what set it was. Opened some of those. Um, and there was just a bunch of people trading. I had bought probably $45 worth of raw singles, just sitting down with people looking through their binders and stuff like that. Got them here on my desk. Uh, didn't buy much of anything, though, through the entire event. Spent maybe $100 on stuff. Even trades and stuff. Wasn't a whole lot going on for me. It was just sale, 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 sale which was nice. Um, but the trade night ended kind of early. I was tired as balls. Like it was like 1130. I called it a night. My wife had already gone up probably 30 minutes before me to the room to go to sleep. She was dead. Um, but I'd followed suit. It was probably 1130 crashed and it felt rejuvenated on Sunday as well. Well rested, just like the night before, even though I drank a lot on Friday, did not do that on Saturday. I don't like doing it back to back. I, it ain't, it ain't about that. I ain't about that life. So on Sunday, um, woke up, felt great, got there early, set up the booth. Again, it was an awesome event. The The number of people walking by, I got to meet some awesome people. Um, shout out to BB as well. He had given me a free Zapdos plush, which was freaking awesome. I got to meet so many people, so many people that uh, make awesome YouTube content and stuff like that. It was an awesome event, man. Um, got to meet the, the creator of Genement, uh, and he still works for PSA. He came by my booth. He's, like, talking to me about Orkana and some other stuff. And he introduces himself as, like, the, the creator of Genement, sold to PSA, collector's group. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, got to meet, like, the founder of CGC Video Games. He was there, Matt McCutcheon, McCullen, McCutcheon. Um, he, he had recently just left there, I guess, in the last two weeks. So he was there, set up as a vendor, is doing that now. Um, so being able to talk to him, I had a CGC graded game there. Talking to him a little bit about it was really cool. Um, talk, he had talked about watching my videos and stuff, so it was pretty cool to hear. He says they, they watch everyone's. Like, they're constantly just checking. It was like free marketing, free market updates, what's going on. Like, it makes sense why they're out there kind of just watching what's happening. Um, but hell of an event. Sunday came to a wrap at 5, which was interesting. I thought Sundays always ended at 6. Maybe I'm wrong on that one, but it ended at 5, which was pretty nice. So I was able to stay the entire time, basically. We left at like 4.45 to go to the airport um, and get out of there. So the sales, I was in the five figures, um, right at five figures, basically. It was pretty nice. Uh, can't complain there at all. Looking forward to Orlando. I think I'll have enough inventory for that. Different inventory. <laughs> it gotten back 
And then the day after I got back, I got my giant CDC submission back. So that was unfortunate. Um, had hoping I was going to get that back in time. But I need to start thinking now about stuff I want to have in like February time frame for Orlando, assuming I can go to it. Um, so that'll be interesting. Plan ahead because things are taking a little bit longer than they were before. That's what I recommend. I do recommend you getting out there to one of these Collecticons, especially if it's one local you could drive to. Do recommend. It's an awesome event. Um, I know Steve, Steve Aoki is going to be performing in Denver. Can't wait to see some video on that and see how that does. I hope he flames Collecticon on their audios and he gets that sorted for future Collecticons. That'll be awesome. He seems like the kind of guy that will have a lot of care in the way his music sounds coming through their speakers. So I hope something gets fixed there and I can't wait to see what it sounds like in other people's uh, Collecticon re recap videos. Uh, yeah, what else? I uh, got to open an English 151 pack, which was pretty cool. That a vendor was walking around. He was afraid that Rattle was going to... He's going to get on him for selling early release. And so he wasn't even selling it at his booth. He was just peddling it to different vendors at their booths. Um, so I bought one pack just to rip, do a pack battle with my friend, which was pretty cool. Um, so being able to do that a week or whatever before it actually came out was cool. That was fun. Um, man, the trip back, the whole, the flight, everything was smooth. Did, got back before midnight on Sunday, got right back into the grind on, on Monday for work. So, um, it's a business trip, to be honest, it's it, like my wife got to experience it. Uh, it's not all fun and games. It is obviously having great time, great fun with all the people, uh, around. Um, we, I had a booth next to a gentleman named Brad G cards. And then the guy next to me was Connor, um, another person I had never met. So, um, it was cool to meet him and it was good. It was highly recommended, man. It was an awesome show. Hope you enjoyed some of this recap and I, I look forward to looking back on it in the future, but it was a 10 out of 10 do recommend Charlotte was a nice town. I did like it. <laughs> it was a better area than Denver. Um, the long walk I had to the con in Denver felt a little more sus. The walk I had through downtown Charlotte was not too bad to the convention, um, quarter mile. So not too bad. Appreciate you guys stopping in. Have a good one. Hit the like button on the way out. Peace. <laughs>